it's beta alanine. If you've heard of beta alanine, I'll bet that you haven't heard of some of the things that we're about to get into because this isn't another beta alanine good video. There's some nuances on if you should even take it. In some cases, the answer is no. And there's one warning related to beta alanine supplementation that I'll get into as well. If you're new to beta alanine, it's an amino acid that your body produces that is combined with the amino acid histidine to form a molecule named carnosine. And with the help of an enzyme called carnosine synthase in your muscles, well, why do we care? Well, we care for multiple reasons that relate to your ability to perform maximally when exercising. The major reason is that as you continue exercise at high intensity, so think like uh, weightlifting, multiple repetitions, uh, running at high intensity, and so on, your muscles develop acidosis. Your muscles become more acidic because your metabolism to maintain energy delivery at a fast rate like that necessary during intense exercise also produces hydrogen ions. And accumulations of hydrogen ions in your muscle cells makes the muscle cell acidic. Okay, so why do we care about that now? The enzymes and functional components of your muscle structure that allows you to contract the muscle cell are highly dependent on a relatively neutral cell environment, meaning not acidic and not too alkaline. If the pH, which is how we measure acidity, is too low, acidic, or too high, alkaline, these functional components do not interact with one another well. And this can slow the speed of many reactions within the cell. So you can imagine that if many hydrogen ions accumulate in the cell, these ions interfere with the thousands of enzymatic reactions that need to occur for your muscle cell to perform optimally. Expand that out thousands of times, and now we're talking about your entire muscle, like a leg muscle, shutting down your performance prematurely, impeding your performance overall. So going back to how carnosine and further upstream beta alanine affects this process, it has a particular chemical structure that allows it to absorb hydrogen ions into itself, thereby reducing the availability of free hydrogen ion levels and buffering against acidosis of the muscle cell. So mechanisms aside, I'd like to offer you some evidence on the actual effectiveness of beta alanine. Let's look over some human evidence as well as some nuances in the data and when you might wanna consider skipping the supplement. There are at least two analyses on the topic, including up to 40 randomized controlled trials on beta alanine supplementation. Okay, I'm gonna show you a single all-encompassing piece of data, and it might seem a bit overwhelming, but I'll walk you through it. And in addition, I'll point out now that there's something intriguing shown in this data here. Oh, and this comes from this analysis. Okay. If you've been with Physionic for a time, you'll know this is a forest plot from a meta-analysis. On the left side, we have the studies included. On the very right, we have the measured effects comparing beta alanine against placebo. So that's an inert substance. And in the middle, we have the visual representation of the measured effects. We have a neutral marker indicating no effect at the dotted line going down to zero there. So if the studies move to the right, there's an effect of beta alanine supplementation on physical performance. On the other hand, if they go the opposite direction, they indicate a negative effect. Obviously, this is a lot of studies, so we should probably just focus on the diamonds. They're an average of all the study results. You also notice that the data is split into three groups. That's where we get into these intriguing findings. Up top is studies that look at physical performance lasting up to only 30 seconds. So, my sex life. <laughs> okay, sorry, had to. Just too good. The second section is physical performance. <laughs> Exercise lasting 30 seconds up to 10 minutes. And the third option is long duration exercise lasting over 10 minutes. These aren't the tightest buckets, <laughs> but they'll do. And they still, re they still reveal something. For example, if we look at beta alanine supplementation for exercise 30 seconds or less, 
The statistics on the data indicate no effect. However, when we extend to 30 seconds up to 10 minutes, suddenly an effect emerges. And we can also visualize that. The middle diamond there moves clearly to the right in favor of beta alanine. Now, the final category, exercise over 10 minutes, also does not indicate an effect. At least it doesn't reach statistical significance. So what do we make of this data? Well, there are a few arguments to be made, but let's boil it down simply. Beta alanine is an effective supplement for those who are physically active within 10 minute bursts. So if you power lift using one or two repetitions, beta alanine will not help you. On the other hand, if you weight lift using 12 repetitions or you're pushing your second ventilatory threshold when running or cycling, beta alanine is probably going to help you. Those are just a few examples, but the bottom line is that if exercise is explosive, or if it's in a steady state like basic cardio well below the second ventilatory threshold, you can probably skip beta alanine. If you don't know what the second ventilatory threshold is, you probably aren't one of those cardio athletes, so skip beta alanine. Speaking to that, there's some data in the other analysis that illustrates when beta alanine is effective, and I think that it would be useful to understand mechanistically why beta alanine is so time-specific. And I haven't forgotten about the warning related to beta alanine supplementation and what it can do to your face as well as how to avoid that issue. Before we do, I'll be covering how pairing a beta alanine with another uncommon molecule can supercharge the effects that we see here, as well as dosing specifics and strategies in the extended version of this video, which is included if you're a Physionic Insider, along with my, all my other investigations. If you're interested, the link is in the description. I'd love to have you aboard. Okay, let's crack this sucker open. In this analysis, we're dealing with fewer studies, only 15, but I'll go ahead and point out that even with fewer studies, this analysis agreed with the 40 study analysis. However, I think that this data is a great illustration because it shows beta alanine ineffectiveness in a metric that seems backwards at first glance. Look at it. Note that the asterisk above indicates a statistically significant effect. The dark boxes are the beta alanine supplemented in individuals grouped into one data. Notice how the performance metric indicates no effect of beta alanine, yet the other metric capacity is improved. What's that all about? Well, performance is exactly what I was talking about earlier. Like, increasing strength or speed. Beta alanine plays no effect if you're looking at power outputs or looking to lift a heavier weight. However, capacity or the amount of work done is improved. Why? Well, some of it you already know from the buffering of hydrogen ions, thereby protecting the muscle cell from acidosis. However, doesn't acidosis also happen when lifting very heavy weights, for example? In short, no, the limiting factor is not the acid, the hydrogen ion accumulation, because the metabolism used in the cells to power performance bursts under 30 seconds is based on a hydrogen-free metabolism called the phosphocreatine system. Yes, the same one that we focus on when consuming creatine. However, hydrogen ion generation doesn't pick up until after 30 seconds or so of exercise as the cell exhausts its phosphocreatine stores and begins relying more on glucose or carbohydrate metabolism for rapid energy generation, known as anaerobic glycolysis, which generates hydrogen ions along with extended muscle contractions as well, also generate these hydrogen ions. So as beta alanine does not offer energy itself, it is useless in those first 30 seconds or so, but it does attenuate a major limiting factor in the muscle later, acidosis. So it pushes the number of repetitions or the length of time that you can perform in a movement intensity that relies on this anaerobic glycolysis metabolism because you are able to experience performance killing acidosis later in the movement. This is called capacity. I realize it's a little complex, but hopefully I didn't uh, butcher that. Okay, let's discuss the last piece here, the warning. Avoid beta alanine at 
all costs. Okay, on second thought, maybe I should have led with that in the video. Well, rip to all those that closed the video already. Moment of silence. Okay. No, it's not serious, but some people, many people in fact, will experience tingling and needle-like feeling when consuming beta-alanine, which can be unsettling for some. Beta-alanine has an effect on your nerve cells too. I'll leave it at that. But there's this tingling sensation that's not dangerous, nor any reason to panic. Although I can understand how it can be unwanted and unsettling. Fortunately, you can avoid it easily by simply splitting your dose throughout the day, say two or three times a day, instead of one heap full all at once. What's funny is that the researchers mentioned that this very feeling is exactly why placebo blinding in these studies is sometimes misleading because most definitely people would know what condition that they're in, even if the treatment is masked. It's too true. I should also mention that while it is true that beta alanine is effective, the effects are mild to moderate. So is it a critical supplement to have? No, but if you're a supplement junkie or you just love being in peak physical performance, beta alanine is a good one to add for those specific non-power related physical performances. But you know, I have other content on muscle performance, which can be found, let's see here, right here. I'll speak with you over there.